has to escape my attention that the whole situation in Palestine with Gaza seems to have struck a particular chord in Ireland. Um, also, the summing up at The Hague the other day involved an Irish lawyer. So, since most people won't have heard of her, who is Blini Nohrali? Let's share some info using the wonderful world of Wikipedia. We'll use something a bit more intelligent than that in a minute. But Wikipedia is all right for basic checks. Well, I, as I, every time I open it, I always tell people, do check stuff on there. Blini Nerale is an Irish barrister who has worked in English and in Ireland. She specialises in human rights and international law. She was raised primarily in London by an Irish family. Um, she studied French and Latin at Queen's College, Cambridge, on a foundation scholarship. She worked for an American think tank for an NGO as a paralegal for a human rights firm in London. She was offered a job as a legal observer on the Bloody Sunday inquiry, probably to move to Derry for a year. She went on to complete a graduate diploma in law at the University of Westminster and a Master of Laws in International Legal Studies at New York University. She also took a vocational course at the Inns of Courts School of Law. Uh, I'm not going to read every bit of that out, but it should give you some background on her, especially the fact that she worked on the Croatia Serbia genocide case. But her name has come up sort of into the spotlight, sort of um, due to her summing up here on this case. As this article from the Evoke notes, her name is well known in legal circles, but. She's found herself catapulted to the spotlight in recent days due to the hearing at the, at, at the Hague. Um, the Irish-born barrister is acting as a special advisor in the South Africa's case at the International Court of Justice. The African nation has accused Israel of violating the United Nations Genocide Convention with its actions in Gaza since the conflict with Hamas began on 7th of October. I don't think it's likely that anything on this with this whole... Sorry, tragic situation is going to be ironed out anytime soon. I suspect I could be long dead before it's ironed out, knowing the complexity of these things. Blinney's stirring words in court have reverberated around the globe in recent days as she spoke of the horror of the genocide against the Palestinian people being live streamed from Gaza to our mobile phones, computers, and television screens. She hauntingly described the um, Conflict as the first genocide in history where its victims are broadcasting their own destruction in real time in the desperate, so far vain hope that the world might do something. It's a sediment that has won plaudits from all corners, but just who is the woman behind the words? As you can see here, you have um, an MP from the north of Ireland applauding her. That particular MP is associated with Sinn Féin, just to put all our cards on the table. So proud of Ireland's Lady Narali, who didn't hesitate to present the South African ICG case against Israel today. Look in the mirror and ask, where was I when Gaza was going through a genocide? Lady has rarely spoken of her personal life. She was born in Ireland, but moved with her father and sister, the mother and sister, sorry, to London at a young age with regular trips back to Ireland. It was her mother's response to a shocking for miscarriage of justice that first inspired a passion for the law even if she didn't know it at the time. Discovering a pamphlet on Magello O'Hare, the 12-year-old shot dead by a British paratrooper as she walked to church in 1976, left a mark on the young lady who was the same age. Um, for those not overly familiar with Bloody Sunday or events like this, I'll, I'll stick some links to, at the bottom of this video, as I'm aware some of this may be obscure to some people. She told Irish Legal News, I read about how she died in the arms of her father after he heard the shot and went running to her. I think it was a fact, age the fact that nobody had been held accountable and the circumstances of the killing that she had been shot as she walked along a country road with a group of other children. When she tearfully approached her mum about the case, she was told to do something about it. And those words have struck with her sense as a comfort, which is a fact of a work desk to remind of how far she's come. In the following years, Pliny would spend her summers visiting the Old Bailey, the Central Court of England and what? Oh, England, Wales. Uh, again, people, please, proofreading, England, Wales. Has, has, the, uh, has the word Anne gone for a holiday there? To sit in the public galleries and watch the trials unfold. 
Despite this, she never envisaged a career in the law and instead chose to study French and Latin at Queen's College, Cambridge, achieving a first-class honours degree in modern and medieval languages. She subsequently studied for a diploma in law for she received a distinction and ranked fourth in a year on the bar vocational co course. The studies then took her to New York, where she studied for a Master of Law degree. As I know, she's also worked for Croatia and Serbia. She seems to have been catapulted into the spotlight, and I can just see, given that Ireland itself is not enjoying a happy relationship with Israel at the minute, this contributing to more tension between the two countries. I wait with interest to see what's going to come of all of this.